to go. A look at the lineups, New Mexico State featuring 6'9", Haskell Siakam, a wet conference freshman of the year, and point guard Ian Baker, who led the conference, shooting 47% from three-point range. Kansas, led by junior Harry Ellis, who's back from that knee injury, uh, plus outstanding point guard Frank Mason, the uh, Jayhawks. Head coach Bill Self in his 12th season with Kansas, and his Jayhawks won the national title back in 2008. Head coach of the Aggies, Marvin Menzies, the Western Athletic Conference Coach of the Year. New Mexico, 13 straight wins. They've won 18 of the last 19, but certainly figure to have their hands full with a Kansas team that made it 11 straight Big 12 regular season titles. Well, New Mexico, a 15 seed in the Midwest, but they are the best of the Western Conference. And they've got an offense that is set up, but they want to be able to get out and run, get their bigs out there, spread the floor against the much bigger Kansas Jayhawks. And if you're Kansas, you've watched games yesterday. You saw the upsets. You know it's about attention to detail and respecting your opponent. A lead official, Tony Badia, with a toss, working with Greg Nixon and Darren White. And the Jayhawks in white. Control. The opener. Mason gets it down low. And here's Ellis going glass. Well, Marvin Menzies said that they were going to go zone. They might pressure a little bit, but they're going to have to find a way, again, to pack it inside to keep Perry Ellis from working. Holland gets it down low. This is the Poway. And the steal. finish. Set up by Uber. They get it back. And, uh, another opportunity. Ellis is blocked by Siakam. Great vision by Siakam right there. He saw that he might have a chance to block Perry shot behind him. Did a great job not getting the contact. Also, terrific perseverance by New Mexico not taking anything for granted, even though Kansas regained possession. Siakam working inside. And using the height advantage. On Ellis, Pascal Siakam, the only freshman in Division I to lead his conference in both field goal percentage and blocks per game. First team all whack. He goes 6'9", 230 pounds. Nice little touch there. On the runner by Mason. We're going to see a, a lot of presence of Siakam inside. I love how the last play he passed the ball out. Reposted, received it in, and he knew he was going to get the double team, so he's already looking for the pass as he catches the ball and it comes in. Daniel Mullins with a crossover. Beautiful setup. Barry not able to put it down, and a foul is called on Mullins. Well, we talked about New Mexico being a setup offense. You know, they have some difficulty against the bigger teams, and in transition, you can take a look. Perry Ellis missed two games. Several uh, about a couple of weeks, well, a week ago or so, because of a knee problem, wearing a huge brace on his right knee. You know, we've been told that it doesn't really bother him. He's doing it precautionary, but nevertheless, didn't get up as high as he wanted. Ellis getting up high, I came up short. The big fellas, especially the duo of these big guys on the side, they're doing a great job of playing defense with position. First their feet. They're staying vertical with their hands up. Siakam with a series of moves, and again, with about an inch or two on Ellis, able to hit. Well, Pascal Siakam, whack freshman of the year, one of three freshmen in America with 400 points or more, 200 rebounds or more. And the other two are Jaleel Okafor from Stanley Johnson from Arizona. We're talking about some pretty elite company. Lucas. Able to knock it down, and the Jayhawks take the lead. Landon Lucas, a 6'10 sophomore out of Portland, Oregon. Let's continue to watch Kansas on that offensive end. With the zone, Lucas is able to come in and flash. If you're a big fella out there in the zone, your job is to flash. Look at the other big on the bottom, or the big across in the three-point line. Off the double-team bad pass, but it's Sam. And he's Barry, who has a good touch. Taking an extra step on the recovery, not able to hit, rebounded by Mason. New Mexico looks a little rushed on that last sequence. Oh, the steal by Mullins. It's a three on two. 
Baker off on that pass. So New Mexico State a bit sloppy here in the opening minutes. Well, that's not their personality. They're primarily a set-up team. But again, they recognize they've got to get up and down, not have to face the big Kansas defense and try to get as many easy opportunities as they can. But they've been revved up probably beyond their capability right now. It's best to go back, be yourself, and play your game. And you're right. That's the hardest thing to do, though. Whether you're a freshman, whether you're the, the college player of the year, is how do you calm yourself down, calm your pacing down, but still have that aggressiveness and still think the game through. New Mexico makes their offense through their defense. They need to finish on plays like that last steal because they won't get many chances against this great Kansas team. And Jamari Trailer, Jr. out of Chicago, has checked in for Kansas. So Bill Self with his first substitution. And a friendly roll from Mason. I'll tell you what, Frank Mason, coming into this game, the last two games, it was just 5 of 22 from the field. Hit his first two shots for Bill Self. That's a good sign. And that second shot was a three-pointer. Airborne by the power. This is Oakley. Lost the dribble. Recovered by Trailer. It counts at the foul. Jamari Trailer, who averages... And he said the last team he thought he would see was New Mexico State. He said out of, out of all those teams, uh, they play uh, such an unconventional defense. He says their zone is distorted. We've already seen a bit of that. They play it high and wide. A talented team, Marv, that is 17-1 since January 1st, over two months since the Aggies lost. And, Lewis, a year ago, Kansas defeated Eastern Kentucky in the NCAA, and then they lost to Stanford. And the round of 32, so they fell short of the uh, Sweet 16. Not a not a happy finish for Andrew Wiggins and Joel Embiid had been hurt. Fouls called on Green, who had uh, just checked in. Right now, speaking of defense, Kansas right now looking to double team the post, and once again create some turnovers. Really challenging the post players for New Mexico State to pass out of the double, and they haven't had success. But first, the call was backcourt violation, and then one of the officials said, no, it was a deflection by Brandon Green, who had just come on, and they huddled up, and now they say, no. They say, yes, backcourt violation nullified, and it will be a New Mexico State ball. That's a great adjustment by Bill Self. We already saw that New Mexico State could have hit a couple more shots inside, but their presence is inside out, so he decided to go down with a post double, make those guys turn it and see if they could pass it out. And there is a, a three-pointer. That's what happens off the post double. If your big guy is aware, there's a guy on the opposite corner, and if the guy on the strong side doubles, there's another guy on the strong side corner. And that's the guy you want to hit to Barry, outstanding three-point shooter. 45% from beyond the arc. Here's a look at that uh, deflection. Coming from that post double in the corner, and you see that was a deflection, but that's exactly why they got the shot out of the corner the next play, because the same guy came and doubled, even the best three-point shooter in the Mexico State wide open. Foul on Jonathan Wilkins of New Mexico State. This is Landon Lucas at the line, just a 66 percent free throw shooter you can watch live games on your amazon fire hd windows or android device iphone ipad or computer with ncaa march madness live what's now at ncaa.com slash march madness or download the app you can do it today jonathan wilkins first guy off the bench from new mexico state picks up two quick fouls back on the bench that has happened before. He'll get the quick book if uh, he does pick up those early fouls. Wilkins, a 6'10 freshman out of Paris, France. A couple of opportunities for Nakawa. And Nakawa, a big, strong center in the middle, has opportunities offensive rebound. But okay. missing. Able to knock down a three. Missing that offensive rebound turns into three points for Kansas. Kelly. NCAA tournament appearance overall 43 tourneys for the Jayhawks. They've won championships including 2008 under Bill Self. And Kansas has taken over with an 11-3 run. The last three minutes score was tied at uh, one point at uh, four apiece. The ball back to the Jayhawks on the foul. 
Foul is, is called on Siakam. I'll tell you, New Mexico State having a lot of trouble offensively. They're getting some good looks, can't put it in a basket. Conversely, Kansas came into this game shooting 43% during the Big 12 championship. Right now, they're 6 of 10 from the field. They are on fire. If you're New Mexico State, you don't want to get frustrated. You're missing a lot of easy shots, but you're getting good looks at the basket. You don't want to start playing hero ball. Keep trying to knock down the same shots that you're getting. This is Mason off the dribble. Nowhere to go. Oakland hit a three a moment ago. New Mexico State in possession. And this is New Mexico State's personality. Play, control, deliberate in the half court, try to find good looks. Got one there for the fumble. Ace are not able to finish. Really impressed with the big men of New Mexico State not filing in tough positions like that when a guard is coming full speed at you. Stay in first and moving your feet. This is Barry. Remy Barry, who had a stellar game against Seattle in the conference tournament championship, 21 points, 4 of 8 from 3. And then that pass went astray. Jamari Trailer looking for a teammate inside. Now Perry Ellis will, will check back in along with Wayne Selden for Kansas. Frank Mason will take a seat. And it's really that Kansas depth inside. You know, shuttling the bigs in and out, putting a lot of pressure on Siakam and the Poway. Really like that substitution by Coach Self to take Ellis out. Ellis missed the dunk, the easy layup. And before you let a player get to thinking too much about him, let him come sit next to you, get re-engaged in the game, and come in and forget what's happened in the past. Looking forward to him finishing inside. UK Eldridge, senior from Dallas, has come on for the first time for New Mexico State. So Baker playing a bit of point. This is Baker with it, watched by Selden. To try to go baseline, ball deflected away. Last touch by Sheldon of Kansas. Baker's got to watch that left arm too. Could have gotten called for a hook. Eleven on the shot clock. Nice. Oh, beautiful spin move. Shalizi Lapawe. And now you see why Kansas wants to double on the block. One on one. You know between Lapawe and Siakam, they have an advantage. And the lob for Ellis. Beautiful toss by Jamari Trailer. The power has to learn defensively how to make sure that he stunts. He should have stunned it right there and got back to the big guy. His weak side defense kind of left him hanging right there. Great recognition. Great recognition by Kansas. This is Eldridge. So the Jayhawks have taken over. Here's a two on one. He faked the stuff. And then Ellis not able to hit on the follow. Wayne Selden could have put it home with a scoop. It's been rough going for the Big 12. They certainly had a huge regular season. Several of their schools making it to the top 25. Seven teams making the tournament. But yet, this will play today, including Kansas. Uh, Oklahoma, West Virginia, Oklahoma State, and a tough game against Oregon. That'll be uh, later on from Omaha. The Jayhawks, by way of Lawrence, Kansas, went 26 at 8, 13 and 5 in conference play. Mexico State needs to talk a little bit on defense. They've had two or three wide open cutters in the back just like that one because they have not communicated on defense. You always have to have the guys in the back telling you where the cutters go. Beautiful pass from Devontae Graham to set it up for Wayne Selden. And the back line certainly has to be cognizant of who's behind them. If you're playing the back line on that defense, you can't let anyone get behind you, particularly the athletic front line of Kansas. See the double team on the power. And the three-pointer for D.K. Eldridge. D.K. Eldridge out of Dallas, a backup point. Shooting only 28% from three-point range. Well, he used to be a starter. He comes off the bench now, as you see, Ellis knocked that shot down. And 
He used to be a starter, and now he doesn't force shots. He comes off the bench. The team is so happy with Eldridge. They said he lets the game come to him now. He doesn't force it. And that's one reason why the chemistry on this team has continued to be so strong over the years. And Ellis able to hit from downtown. He now has seven points. Barry trying to back his way in. And is hit by Sheldon. Well, he talked about the defense in the zone. You cannot let people get behind you. But right there, it's a little screen. You know, you've got to be cognizant of who's behind you. That screen preventing the Poway from really covering. And if you notice, Remy Barry didn't say a word. You've got to communicate. Yeah. Kelly Oubre, Landon Lucas, a check back in for the Jayhawks. We're about halfway through this first half. Mullins on the inbounds. Trying to get it to Siakam. Kansas continues to uh, double up. An example of using glass by Daniel Mullings. 6'2", senior out of Toronto last season's WAC Player of the Year. First team all WAC this season. Farway and Siakam are down there playing grown man ball in the paint. They are clearing out the paint, banging and going for the rebound. Oh, beautiful move by Oubre as he went baseline and was able to sky and hit. Yeah, I understand the risk by New Mexico and running at Oubre, but you got to be able to close under control. Barry is off. And a foul has been called on Kansas. And here you see right here, look at the great pump fake, and then he recognizes, wait a minute, I can drive it all the way to the hole right there. You love seeing college players not settle for that three, attacking the basket. Foul is called on Ellis. That is his first. It seems in New Mexico State, when they get the ball into the foul, they can do a flare screen on the weak side. It seems that they always come and double team them, leaving the man wide open. Travel on the power. Chile in the power, who dominated in the win over Seattle to win the conference tournament the championship game. 18 points, 10 rebounds. He's out of Johannesburg, South Africa. There's certainly an international flavor to the Aggies of New Mexico State. Nine of their 13 players are... Uh, international five from Toronto, two from Paris, plus players from Cameroon and, and South Africa. I want to go scout these guys. <laughs> I was I, I was asking Coach yesterday, what is this San Antonio East or something like that? You look at it, Paul Weir. Uh, he recruits all the Canadians on the teams. You see the beautiful steel right there. But he was saying that he loves that the team has an international field that builds their chemistry. They all play for each other, and they don't have kind of any outside notions of what college is supposed to be like. They define their team within each other. Recruiting is like a vacation. <laughs> exactly. You want to go to Africa and recruit some players? Paris. Paris, yeah. Ian Baker with the steal that he was fouled by Sheldon. So Baker at the line. Incidentally, Michigan State and Georgia playing right now in Charlotte. That game is on Free TV. Jim Vance, Bill Raftery, Grant Hill, Tracy Wolfson at the uh, at the microphone. You know, in 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 the pros, when you'd have advanced scouts uh, going overseas, you always get the feeling they'd have to justify their presence because they come back with someone who would be even a late second round draft pick. Yeah, because they stayed over in Paris four weeks longer than they exactly. should have and said they were negotiating. <laughs> Eight-point lead for Kansas. Just under nine minutes remaining. First half. And you take a look at New Mexico State really doing a good job now with the full-court pressure, not necessarily to steal the ball, but to control pace. They tried to run with Kansas early to no avail. Now they're trying to play their pace and be themselves. Uber not able to hit the open shot. Frank Mason is back in at the point for Kansas. This is Barry. He's been way off. Kept alive. Baker for three. New Mexico State shooting just six for 17 from the field. Ellis packs it up. Ellis met by the double. It's Graham. Rebounded by McCowan. Some pretty solid non gambling defense by New Mexico State. And that's starting to pay off for them as they gain possession. Now they're playing at their pace, spread the floor, play more deliberate. And then in recent games, the zone has been a key for the, for the Aggies. Those teams in the 
and the lack of conference uh, could not match their size, but Kansas certainly can, so they said they would a battle with leukemia. So, Craig, rest up, and uh, we all hope to see you soon and with a microphone in your hands. Here, here. He's at home right now in a nice, comfortable, flashy <laughs> outfit, enjoying the games. We're praying for you, brother. You think he's wearing those sport jackets? Oh, he has going? something very ugly on right now. <laughs> I guarantee you that. I got a smoking jacket. Like 20 Ask different out. colors. Yeah. <laughs> Kansas in possession. Graham off the head fake. Changed his mind. Nice setup. Trailer did not hit. Kept alive, though, on a back tap. Here's Graham with the runner. And it's reflected out of bounds. Last touch by the Jayhawks. Well, we talked about the effectiveness of this New Mexico State zone and also their ability to control tempo after they score with the pressure. Kansas has scored zero points in the last two minutes and 17 seconds after going on a 20 to 12 run over the last two minutes, 10 minutes and 23 seconds. So the zone has worked. The control of the pace has worked. Now New Mexico State has to find the range. It's only six of 18 on the field. Mullins handling. Brandon Green has checked back in for Kansas. Mullins looking down low. There's a double on the post, making the power give it up. Baker rejected. They lost the handle. Fourth shot by Baker. And it is deflected out of bounds. The, the outside official, Greg Nixon, taking a longer look. And, and apparently last touch by the by the Aggies. Now Ian Baker will take a seat. And that's the anxiety of playing in this tournament. You know. It really came down to a point where Baker could have gotten the right rebound and pulled it back outside, restarted their offense. But instead, he hoisted one up out of anxiety. Better communication that time from New Mexico State on the back line, informing their big fellas that they had the corner. No oop there. Mason looking for the pick. There's Mason. Yes. Frank Mason, sophomore out of Petersburg, Virginia. Second team, all Big 12. Averages 12 points. 41% shooter from downtown. He now has seven points in this first half. You know, we saw some, saw some great comebacks yesterday, but if you're the underdog, you do not want to get down below 10. You want to stay within that pace as you see the turnover right there is coming because they are doubling the big fella every time he gets it in the post, putting pressure on him, making him, in all essence, a point forward from that position. And so hopefully they can make adjustments at halftime that when they're throwing the ball into the post, they're already having weak side action so he can get it out of his hands to an open man because he is open on the weak side. Here's how you neutralize that double team. Bring the power up a little bit higher to that first hash mark. And as soon as he gets it, let him turn baseline because the help is coming from the top and from the side. You turn baseline, you got a quick move to the basket. I agree with you, but I don't think they have that trust in the Poway, who they've thrown softballs to. You know, he's a soccer player first. He doesn't have the best hands in the game. They say he's still getting learning. My thing is, if you're not a, a beast down there on that block and you don't have those ball movements, stay on the post. Don't See. come up that high. You can't See. come up that high if, you're not, if you don't have those moves. See, it's now and now. <laughs> but, but he can't learn in the game. You got to learn in the summer when you get better. They talk about the former soccer players having quick feet. They don't talk about the hands, though. <laughs> that, was, that was the sixth turnover by, by New Mexico State. And it's able to keep it alive off that three that missed fire. And here is another three. It is drilled by Devontae Graham. And then Kansas with their ball movement inside out. Not settling for the first jumper of finding some open guys against that New Mexico State zone. They're having patience. Off the spin, try to get it down low. Batted out of bounds, last touch by Kansas. Look at the ball movement right there, inside, out, penetration, kick, bang. And you love the aggressiveness by the guards on Kansas. And that's what I want to see from New Mexico State. Keep going in there, attacking the basket. Of course you have those trees, those shot blockers in there. But hopefully you'll draw their attention. One of your guys will come to a weak and open side cutting, and you can dish it off. A.K. Eldridge back at the point. This is 
Eldridge. A fadeaway jump. You got to resist. If you're New Mexico State, you resist the temptation of your guards trying to do it by themselves. I know the bigs haven't been as effective because of the double team, but you still have to explore, go inside out, work for better shots than the Aggies have taken over the last several possessions. There's Graham. Oh, the score is like that. Very patient possession. I really hope, and I disagree. I hope New Mexico State's guards get aggressive. The, the big fellas are not good free throw shooters. They're not going to get back in the game from giving them the ball and getting them ones. The guards have to get easy shots. This is college. Guys can't get their own shots. You need guards going in there, being aggressive, getting the big guys the ball. They're not been successful in the post so far. 8 all run by Kansas. Meanwhile, the Aggies continue to have their offensive problems. Haven't been really that successful. Successive, um. Coach State without a field goal in nearly six minutes. Kansas in the midst of an 8-0 run. They've hit five of eight from beyond the three-point line. They have their biggest lead of the game. They're up by, by 16 points. That is last touched by the Aggies. And just when you think that the Aggies had a formula playing in zone defense, being able to pressure when they put the ball in the basket, they go into a drought. And Kansas comes out of their drought. And as you mentioned, Marv, 8-0 run over the last five minutes. Well, you mentioned it, Lynn, because of the presses caused the, caused the Kansas guards to have the ball in their hands more. And guess what? Kansas can really trust their guards to facilitate, break down that press, and try to find some easy buckets. Well, they've done just that. I mean, they came into this game shooting 8 of 32 from beyond the arc over the last three games. And right now, they are on fire, 5 of 8. Nice pass on the bounce from Brad and Green to Jamari Trailer. So Kansas extends the lead. Now, certainly a long way to go, but if Kansas wins and Wichita State defeats Indiana in the second game here this afternoon, we would actually see a Sunday matchup of Kansas and Wichita State. These schools have not met since 1992. an extra step but the ready barry is able to hit on the scoop nothing like a ball fake isaiah thomas said it is the best move ever in basketball right there you saw the wonderful ball fake you're going in amongst the trees get a guy off his feet and try to finish trailer able to get it inside ellis is stripped ellis stripped again good play by mullins here's barry for three yes and there's that aggressiveness chris you talked about Continuing to take the fight. Downtown of the Aggies hoping that Remy Barry will be getting off now after that uh, last three. He does shoot 45% from three, which is second in the conference. Ran on the hop, wide open. Perry Ellis. That's too easy. You can't allow the ball handler to penetrate that easily without any kind of obstacle. And then suddenly collapse on the ball handler and forget about the bigs. Kansas' success from outside and in has been because of good inside-out balance, whether off the pass or off the bounce. Nine points for Ellis. Once again, the, the double down low, and they take advantage as Daniel Mullins was able to take it to the bucket. Great adjustment by the coach and the Aggies right there. Every time the double team comes from the same place, that means you have an open cutter coming from the same place. They recognize it, sent the cutting man down, you get an easy layup. Good job. And you also had a different passer down here on the post. <laughs> Somebody who's going to identify the cutter. So Kansas in possession. They're up by 13 points. Ellis off the turn. Try to go glass. And back comes New Mexico State. Didn't go for Ellis, but that was a nice read. Against the 2-3, you get in the next sweet spot around the free throw line. Read that middle man. He comes up. You blow by him. He stays back. You knock down the jump. Baker played by Mason. Ian Baker, sophomore from Washington, D.C. Shot clock under 10 at 7. Mullins with the hesitation move. Good play. Slapped away by Oubre to keep it alive. His grab on the run. Trying to draw the foul. Did not get the call. He ends up out of bounds. It'll be New Mexico State ball. So impressed with New Mexico State's defense. I mean, 
you know, don't get me wrong, they're getting dominated inside, but when it comes down to one-on-one -on -one defense, not fouling, staying vertical, moving your feet, the Aggies are doing a really good job of that. Now Ellis will take a seat coming up on AT&T at the half scores and highlights plus the latest NCAA tournament news all coming up on AT&T at the half. Marv Albert, Chris Weather, Len Elmore, and Lewis Johnson from Omaha, Nebraska. It is a packed house, better than 16,000 turning out for this doubleheader. Final seconds. Mullins. And that will do it for this first half. Nine points for Ellis. Seven. Marv. Marvin Menzies, head coach of New Mexico State. Eighth year with the Aggies as an assistant. Spent much time on the Rick Petito staff at Louisville. As this second half gets underway, it's Barry who is throwing some signs late. And Selden comes right back for Kansas. Can't celebrate. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. Remy Barry gets that layup aggressively. New Mexico State turns to each other and says, hey, we got something. And then Wayne Selden Jr. just sneaks right behind him. Remy Barry has come a long way as a senior, averaging 13 hey. points a game. He's had a lot of wild shots from in close. Two of them right there. And the power is just firing one up. And here's where the lack of sophistication as a big man comes from the Poway. Tremendous specimen, outstanding athlete, but he's still got to learn how to play the game. When he came down with that rebound, he needed to gather himself, not rush, but instead start to fall off balance and just hoisted one, which gave Kansas the opportunity for possession. And uh, off the tie-up possession arrow, 20 to Kansas. And Selden comes across. Selden and Mason at the guards with Ellis, Oubre, and Lucas up front. Opening minute, second half. Here is Perry Ellis. And rebounded by Siakam. Siakam with Barry, Napawe, Mullings, and Baker. You know, I've always hated the fact that whether you play slow or fast, it doesn't matter. Your pace can be fast. You don't have to take the first shot available, as you see right there. The, I believe it was a foul. Yeah, Mullen on the drive, got a hack. So a team like New Mexico State, even though you want to play slow, slow, you can push with aggression. You can push and peruse, look around, say, wait, we don't have anything, bring it back out. But you don't have to just walk the ball up to have a slow pace. Yeah, that was obviously a non-shooting foul. New Mexico State in possession. Deflected out of about one of deflections on the part of, of Kansas. This a talented Kansas team, but guys, different than recent years. They do not have consistent low post presence, but they do shoot the three extremely well. They've hit five of eight. As Lewis mentioned a moment ago, five of eight from downtown in the first half. But remember, 73% of their scoring, 74% of their minutes are coming from underclassmen. Guys still in development. Barry not able to hit. Talk about the size. I wonder, is it going to be a problem if they continue to pass this? Oh, see. The wonderful finish right there. Frank Mason able to go the distance. It is a 15-point Kansas lead. But in thinking about tomorrow for Kansas, they're going to watch tape, and they're going to say, big fellas, we got manhandle inside. Regardless if we got steals or if we got whatever, as you see, they're getting low post position inside, and if they had better hands and were better finishers, this would be a different situation. I know this is going to be an emphasis of Kansas' D. And there's a reaching defense. Instead of getting in front of the ball handler, making him go laterally instead of straight to the cup, New Mexico State just late recognizing the drive. So Napawe will go to the line. Ellis picked up his second foul. Chili Napawe out of Johannesburg, South Africa. This is his 14th game back. And he was uh, sitting out with injuries on the court. We're always open to try. Show us you're open to try. Go to CoachZero.com. There's a full court pressure again by New Mexico State. Essentially to slow Kansas down. The grab going to the pace with Kansas attacking like Bill Self said. But this firing. 
Pass intended for Lucas. And that's what oh, you're talking about. Beautiful yes. reverse by Ian Baker. That's when you want your guards to step up. It is so hard as a big guy to have a little guy coming at you to be able to move your feet, have the awareness, and stay vertical. And for this team from New Mexico State, their guards specifically are going to have to be a little more aggressive, push the envelope until their big fellas can help them, maybe just by offensive rebounding. D.K. Eldridge checking up. As you see this, he, he sees right there that Everyone has their hair turned. Perry Ellis is looking at the help, and that's when you need to be aggressive. You don't have to just force it for your shot. But if Perry Ellis would have turned around, there would have been a wide-open man at the three-point line across the lane. And the pressure continues from New Mexico State. Sheldon for three. And the live trailer is fouled. Well, that time, the pressure was a little livelier. And in turn, Kansas looking to attack it. He's got a good look. But going back to your point, Chris, it's really all about exploring the defense. Make yes. or miss. Point guards need to push, explore the defense. If you don't have numbers, you pull it back out, run your set. Currently, they are checking the, the time on the shot clock. Pasco Siakam. Call for the foul. And... Amari Trailer getting ready to shoot a couple. I love the fact in this tournament that they're not given anything and New Mexico State is not asking for anything. They understand that they have to do this with their hard work and will. And you just have to love the fact that they're banging and trying to play as hard as they can right now in this tough game. Reminder, Monday on CBS for NCIS Los Angeles, solving crime is a slam dunk. Don't miss a minute of the hit drama, NCIS Los Angeles. That's Monday at 10, 9 Central, only CBS. Love seeing Selden pressure up 94 feet when your guards are doing that in a, in a big game and you already have the lead. That just shows you how engaged they are defensively. Power. Pushing foul is called on Landon Lucas of, of Kansas. And how about second? The power puts it on the floor, goes to the back. He heard you say, get him up higher. That's right. You got to get him up higher, isolate him. And that's why I say it's now or never. If you didn't know how, you better learn. <laughs> the power is 62%. Free throw shooter averages 10 points, 7 rebounds. And uh, being a Detroit Lions fan, uh, we, we need, uh, we just lost Sue, so it looks like he can come in and replace him <laughs> with his body. I mean, five, six, ten, about 268. Off the steal, trailer ahead of the field, and it puts it down. Jamari Trailer, the junior out of Chicago, who's played very well off the bench. Those open floor turnovers, live ball turnovers will kill you. And it's just by 14 with three and a half into this second half. And it demoralizes the defense. Another turnover by New Mexico State. Oh, oh nice. Look, they got it back. Here come the Aggies. Mullins lost it, recovered, not able to hit. And he came from out of bounds to retrieve that ricochet. You know what? That was uh, that was some messy play right there. But I tell you, if I'm the coach, I'm proud of my guys. You played hard. You got back defensively. You tried to get a good shot offensively. And that's how you shorten the gap. You do it with your effort. And right now, New Mexico State may not be as skilled, may not be as big. But their effort is matching that of Kansas. And for the first time, New Mexico State goes with their 7-3, 335-pounder, Tanvir Bular, who's back from a, a broken ankle that was suffered just before the start of the season following a, a redshirt year. 7'3", 335 pounds, and the younger brother of Sam Bular, who averaged 10 points for New Mexico State last year as a sophomore. The brother, Sim, goes... 7-5, 360. Yeah, and I know you had game, but how would you like to go down the lane and see that big 7-5 guy waiting for you? It is an offensive foul. 
Well, to answer your question, Chris, I played against a 7'4 guy in Tom Burleson. <laughs> but New Mexico State, balance scoring for Kansas. Uh, let's go over to Lewis. Yeah, Mar, Bill Self really uncomfortable with the way this lead has dwindled a bit, trying to get his players to understand they're just not playing together. They've got to share the ball. He wants them to get the ball in the high post. What's happened to that? And then he finally said, wake up. I think you kind of forget what time of day it is here. All right, Lewis, Kelly Oubre. Had an opportunity that passed slightly off the mark, so the ball goes back to the Aggies. And Bular almost victimized by the same alley-oop strategy used in the first half, where a screener comes and checks them from behind, and then another Kansas Jayhawk, this time Kelly Oubre, comes behind and gets the alley-oop. Bad pass, otherwise that would have been a flush. Bular, a freshman, out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. This time, a couple of nifty passes, and it ends up in the hands of Daniel Mullins, who's able to score. So New Mexico State showing some signs, and we can see why Bill Self was upset. Well, you can see the confidence soaring in the Aggies right now. That'll do a little bit to dampen their hopes. But nevertheless, New Mexico State now feeling as though they're in the game, starting to play the way that Marvin Menzies expected them to play. Wayne Selden now with six points off that jump shot. Kansas has led by as many as 18 that back in the in the first half. This is Eldred. That's that flare pass I'm talking about. It's going to continue to be there. You can't get frustrated when you miss good shots. Continue to execute. Hooper all the way and try to put it down with the left hand. Long rebound is handled by Mason. Came all the way back to the top of the circle. Unfortunately or fortunately when you're seven five you have a bullseye right on your chest Everybody wants to make a poster on you <laughs> Look it around very well and ends up in the hands of Kelly Oubre He's played well eight points for Oubre and a timeout is taken by Marvin Menzi That is playing without Cliff Alexander who had been a very key play. He continues to sit out. There's an ongoing investigation into Alexander's eligibility. Reportedly, the investigation involving potential improper benefits received by Alexander's family. Nice uh, hook by Bumar. There were improper benefits received by Alexander's family from a third party, reportedly a player agent. And uh, Alexander was having an outstanding freshman season well, Alexander not traveling with the team Bill Self recognizes that doesn't want to create any distractions and these young men when Alexander comes back I don't anticipate you know any lengthy suspension for next season if any three second violations of the ball back to New Mexico State and this is Kansas team that has had the top ranked strength of schedule in the nation for the second straight season and you know that New Mexico State is well aware of that well speaking of Kansas in that regard remember that debacle against Kentucky way back in November of this early this season they lost by 32 after that they reeled off eight straight wins won nine out of ten and it just shows these young players grew up and you talk about the addition of Cliff Alexander next year whenever he's cleared to play. And this is going to be a formidable bunch. If you're expected to go far in the tournament and you lose by 32, you better wake up and play well after that. And so I'm sure for Coach Self, he said, hey, we'll take that loss and hopefully it'll motivate his guys to pay attention to detail like he wants. Yes, Chris, I think that was a dynamic wake-up call. <laughs> it better be. As Kansas ends up 26 and 8 against that very difficult schedule and 13 and 5 in, in conference play. That's a four shot way right off by Barry. It's cut the oh. line and it is the 7 3 Bulldog with a second bucket. You love the first jump hook on the left hand, a nice move and rebound there. I just, all I keep thinking about is Mother's Day when I watch him. Him and his brother better buy their mother <laughs> the best Mother's Day presents ever. Off the steal, New Mexico State back in possession. Mullins is foul. Well, Lord, just imagine him and his brother eating his mom and pops out of house and home. From Omaha, before a sellout crowd, and they'll watch Wichita State go up against Indiana in the second of this twin bill. 
Another shot way off from Reddy Barry. Devontae Rand now works the point. We're seeing some light pressure from New Mexico State. They pull back on it. Sheldon on the drive. And the putback. Despite the putback, you got to give Bular a lot of credit. We talked earlier in the first half, New Mexico State not necessarily communicating with each other on defense. And Bular in the middle has been so talkative, helping his teammates out. That was just a product of him helping and no one covering for him. But he's added a dimension that's really helped the New Mexico State defense. Lucas now 5.7 rebounds with that uh, follow-up. Pushing foul is called on Kansas. And three, for more information on game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. And a pretty move by Nopawe. Chile Nopawe goes 6'10", just under 270. Now with seven points, not able to get going in the first half. Well, I think he's going back to his roots using some of that soccer footwork <laughs> to get himself a good shot. Started out playing soccer in the South Africa. Came to basketball late. Nice touch by Braddon Green, the sophomore out of Juliet, Georgia. Kansas so efficient. Not a lot of wasted dribbles. They pump fake, make sure they get one dribble and a shot up. Chemistry is great. Penetration by the point guards. Have to love the way they're playing. Eldridge with space for three. That's good identification. Siakam, terrific job of locating the open man he took the double team faced the defense as he should and found the open man he's the guy that needs to be on the side that new mexico state starts their offense load into the post take the double team and find the open guy there's graham open this by trailer lucas was right there and draws the foul Watch the double team come. Siakam receives. Here comes the double of rotation down in the paint. He just waits until Frank Mason the third commits. And then does a great job of finding DK Eldridge. Third foul on Siakam. So here is Landon Lucas. Only a 66% free throw shooter. He redshirted during his first season in Kansas. Appeared in 22 games last year as a as a freshman. So the Hoosiers of Indiana in the house taking a peek at what is going on here late in the second half. Such a fun time when you're coming in. The next game is yours. You've been watching a little bit in the hotel room. You got a chance to eat. Call your parents. Now the nervousness, the butterflies kick in. You put on your favorite song, your Kendrick, your Nas, your Jay. <laughs> then you go in the locker room and just get ready to go. What a wonderful feeling for those guys to get off the bus ready to play now. The only time it's more fun is after you play the game, you've won. Then exactly. you can sit back and watch the other guys go. <laughs> exactly. Len, you notice Chris got into the subject of where you get a chance to eat. <laughs> it seems to be on the priority list here. For college students, it is. <laughs> Young fellas always do that. <laughs> you and I watch our diets, Marv. We can't afford that. <laughs> well, off that last miss shot, Wilkins. Able to follow it home. Just under 10 minutes remaining in the second half. One thing Kansas has to do is deny the second chance opportunity. I'm sorry, New Mexico State has to deny Kansas a second chance opportunity. Tripping foul is called on Eldridge as Trailer hit the deck. Five team fouls on New Mexico State. This amoeba zone always makes for an ugly game. You can go back to the days of, of Cheney uh, at Temple, and you never can get a rhythm. You never can get rebounds. It always seems ugly, but the concentration and the dedication as far as mentally it takes to get through those games and get that ugly win is tougher a lot of times than maybe teams you could beat easily. Nice move down the lane, working his way. Frank Mason. That's the one thing that defense will give you. You move the ball laterally a couple of times, you spread, you find gaps, and if you're quick, like Frank Mason, you get into those gaps. Ian Baker backs it up. Nice job by Kansas defense, closing the gaps of their own. 
Baker. Came up with air. Rebounded by Ellis. And a foul call. It's an offensive foul on Devontae Graham of Kansas. We saw earlier when New Mexico State celebrated a layup and let Kansas get back for an easy dunk. Well, this time we see Baker say, wait, I missed the shot, but I'm going to stay in the play. He didn't reach. Way to put his body in front and get the charge. Sophomore taking advantage of the freshman, Graham, who just wasn't cognizant of the defense behind him. Mexico State putting it in play underneath their own basket, but Trailer off the steal. And now Mason resets. Uses the pick from Ellis. Mason and Graham in the backcourt. Trailer coming up to the high post, and a foul is called. Reach in on Daniel Mullings of the Aggies. So Mexico State now in a 1-3-1. At times, it seems like a 4-1. They actually have four guys above the free throw line with just one guy back. They love to play zone, but they'll go man and zone in the same possession. Good save. Grant gets it down low. His trailer. Kansas maintains possession. Right here, you see, look, four guys above the free throw line. Of course, you only have one big guy down, but still, usually in a traditional 1-3-1, one, 2-3 three, one, three zone, you don't have that. New Mexico State switching it up right now out of desperation, looking to get back in the game. Strong game for Mason, 11 points. He's hit five of six, six rebounds, four assists. This is green for three. And that's what patience will do for you. New Mexico State... Tried to jump the ball handler. Got guys out of position and then the find. Terrific job by Brandon Green to stay where he was and wait. Green, the 6'7 sophomore who shoots 41% from three Kansas, a superb three-point shooting team. Once again, the double by the Jayhawks. Anthony's keep it alive. Bad pass saved by Ellis. Here comes Payson. Cut off by Mullins. The problem when you play a 2-3 zone, that middle guy is going to be Perry Ellis, a guy that's capable of shooting and a great passer. As we see Graham right there taking advantage of that gap, getting the foul. Going up against Indiana, should Kansas and Wichita State both win, they would meet for the first time since back in 1992. It's actually a rivalry that does not exist. <laughs> and there are reasons uh, for that, I know Wichita State would like to play uh, Kansas. Once again, it is Brandon Green from long range. That is his second three-pointer within minutes. Well, again, Kansas just outstanding from beyond the arc. We mentioned before, came into this game just shooting at 8 of 32 over the first three games. Mullings not able to hit, but there's the follow by the power. That 20-point lead just a moment ago, the largest of the game. And we're down to six and a half remaining. First screen and roll I've seen by New Mexico State tonight. Maybe they need to do that a little bit more, being that you have to send a help guy to stop your big man coming down the middle, which leaves wide open for him to jump shooters to the team. I think right now, though, New Mexico State is in that area where you better make some stops and string them together. Mason with the step, went to the reverse, and he drew the foul. Still time remaining from the New Mexico State point of view. See the balance on the part of the of the Jayhawks for getting back to the possibility if Wichita State does knock off uh, Indiana. The feeling has been that uh, Bill Self has not wanted to play against Wichita State. Bill feels that he'd rather schedule, this is what he says, non-conference games in L.A., Boston, Washington, and San Francisco, which are valuable re recruiting areas. But does it really come down to uh, Kansas would have nothing to gain and they'd never hear the end of it if they lose? So basically, they're scared to play a team. 
<laughs> Let's just call it like we see it. Well, if you're Wichita State, you know, you're, you're scared to lose against a smaller opponent, and maybe you have a lot to be scared of. You never know, but that's not something I want to be on the record as a coach saying we don't want to play a smaller team. We'll play anybody, anywhere, anytime, and you can bring your own referee. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That's the attitude you better have. This is the tournament. This is real. <laughs> well, Greg Marshall of Wichita State says he's been trying for years to schedule it. That's a three-pointer. Mason now with 16 points. But you think about the smaller schools that want their chance, that just want to play, that you're coming in the charter plane. They're going to take a bus. They'll meet you here. And, of course, you know, you look at the, you even look at New Mexico State. These guys, you just want to play the best. You want to lose against the best. And that's all I think the fans of Wichita State are saying. They yep. respect Kansas and, and want to be in that beef. But I would say this. I don't think the fans of Wichita State perceive themselves as victims. Remember, they were 35-1 last no, year. No, that's why they won they the game. Victims Kansas. don't ask to play against the superheroes. Yeah, they're not the victim. Here is Craig oh. to the left hand. Comes Baker. Lawrence, Kansas, about 160 miles from the Wichita State campus. Foul committed by Ellis of the Jayhawks. So that's three on Ellis and Mullings to the free throw line. Tired of hearing the same sports headlines on repeat. We'll get everything about your favorite teams. Get it all first. Download the Team Stream app from Bleacher Report. Well, New Mexico State's epitaph in this game, should it end the way we see it right now, is the fact that they right now have more field goal attempts than Kansas. They just could not find the range. Credit Kansas' defense. Uh, a little bit of anxiety by New Mexico State, and it's been the turnovers as well. New Mexico State, 10 turnovers, leading to 15 second chance points as we take a look. Mm. Looked like a you know, yeah, sneaker into the uh, face of of Ellis. Jonathan Wilkins back for New Mexico State. In, ho in hockey, that would be high sticking. Here it's high foot. <laughs> <laughs> I like to hear you talk about Tom Burleson and your battles. <laughs> with Seven North foot four, yeah. five. Uh, Tommy was a great player. You know, we definitely had our battles and. You go what, 6'10"? Uh, 6'9 and a half. Six, oh, <laughs> come on. Man. Did you shrink? <laughs> you were listed at 6'10", as I recall. But Monty Tau, who was 5'7", and the spark plug on that team tells me he could take you down low any time <laughs> you seen the he face he made. Today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as mobile. Five minutes remaining. Second half. Automatic. Two hands on the back of the ball handle. You're going to get a call. And Lucas looks bewildered, but that's the rule. John Landon Lucas. But you said it, Lynn, though, in the beginning of the game, when the post players take their time, they have more of an advantage. And with the body that these guys have and, and the post inside presence, the more you take your time, the more pressure you put on that defender. He has to put two hands and a couple forearms on you to stop you from impeding progress, to stop you from scoring. Boy, you look at Nepali's body. I wish I had taken a lap in that gene. <laughs> Can you imagine? Back in the day, knowing what, what I knew back then. Both teams are the one and one. Poway, 10.7 rebounds. Uh, you mentioned how many more shots New Mexico, New Mexico State has attempted as opposed to Kansas. Early on, they were certainly in position, but it was a series of wild yeah. shots by the big man. And uh, I don't know if it was anxiety at that start or, or a combination of good play on the double teams. Uh, by Kansas. Mason's pass batted away on a deflection. Ellis gets it right back out. And they can reset. And Mark, you got it exactly right. It's a combination of both. And yeah, the foul has called us on the pass, but uh, it is one of one scenario. It is on Mullins. That is number four. So that's the eighth foul on New Mexico State. Devontae Graham, a 70% free throw shooter. He backs up at the point. He's played well today, as has Braddon Green. So Kansas receiving help off the bench. 
Graham considered a, a late bloomer, originally signed with uh, Appalachian State, and asked for his release when they changed conferences. Ended up uh, going to Brewster Academy, in effect, playing another season before going to college and uh, decided on Kansas, and he has come on. Well, he has. I mean, he hasn't gotten an awful lot of time. This is about 17 minutes a game, average about five points a game. But the signs are there, shooting 40% from beyond the arc. He's got a live body, active defensively. You can see him there going back and forth. He's going to get his minutes next year. Baker for three. And a loose ball foul inside. It is uh, called on Kansas. And that is number four on Ellis. So the double bonus now with uh, Kansas collecting its 10th foul. So two shots for Pascal Siakam. Don't miss the premiere of the Late Late Show with James Corden and this week's first guest, Tom Hanks, Will Farrell, Mila Kunis, Kevin Hart, starting Monday after day only CBS. Well, the Big 12 will be feeling a bit better about things after Black Thursday from the Big 12 uh, point of view. The conference tournament champion Iowa State losing, as did Baylor, as did Texas. Four Big 12 teams are playing today. Aside from Kansas, Oklahoma, West Virginia, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State in a tough game against Oregon. That's coming up tonight here in Omaha. to Ellis who try to go off glass. And it's recovered by Lucas. Kansas once again with this possession. Probably looks to kind of melt this clock a little bit more. They did it the last possession. Although they didn't get a, a look. Well, they've got a lead right now, and that's all they have to do, really. Just try to melt the clock, take the time away. Yeah, they were doing just that, but Mason's pass ended up off the mark. Mullins. Wide open. Three-pointer by D.K. Eldridge. And that is his third from downtown. And in games like this, when they contend to get out of control lately, if you're the team that's losing, you just want to finish with the same time lost to Wisconsin this past Sunday in the uh, Big Ten Conference Championship. What a terrific game that was. Yeah, it was overtime and you saw the execution of Wisconsin, what they're capable of doing and playing defense without fouling. But looking at the Georgia game, remember Georgia gave Kentucky all they wanted for about 36 minutes in a conference game earlier this year. Eldridge with that bucket. Iowa State in the conference tournament tied a game. A disappointment but Kansas here as an at-large team, the number two seed in the Midwest region behind Kentucky and uh, facing a Mexico, New Mexico State team that was 15th seed in the Midwest. And time is running out on the Aggies. Coming up on 2.20 remaining. for that loose ball. Hunter Nicholson will just come in for Kansas. Not able to hold on. So that can get to the inside. And it is Nicholson with the block shot. He's a 6'10 junior out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. Well, despite a 17-point lead, there's no relaxation on that Kansas squad bringing guys in off the bench who have to prove themselves playing time you're going to continue to get intensity and Mickelson although he plays maybe seven eight minutes a game has had some good moments uh, for the Jayhawks this season who has been hitting the shot not that time and Mark talking about Mickelson had eight points against West Virginia the game that Perry Ellis went down he came in as a substitute and made his presence felt so Kansas on its way to a record of 27 and 8, 27 plus wins for the eighth time the last nine seasons. Their ninth straight opening round victory in the NCAA 
And he wins finally for the Big 12 after the uh, rough day that they had yesterday. And they will advance to go up against the winner of Wichita State, Indiana. That will be the round of 32 played on Sunday. I think Marvin Menzies has to be proud of the effort of his guys. They came in against a team that's bigger, stronger, obviously more battle-tested. And there were points and times during this game when New Mexico State was competitive. But I think it was the Kansas side, particularly on the offensive boards, and their ability to convert offensive rebounds into points that made the difference here as well as the three-point shooting. And that 13-game win streak will come to a close. They've won 18 of their last 19. They'll drop to 23 and 11. It's a ninth straight loss in NCAA tournament play. Those hugs that you see the coach giving are some of the most sincerest hugs you can receive from a guy that has been your mentor and has cheered you on and when you talk about 15 guys against the world it really is that way what do i mean no one believed that new mexico state could win this game only those guys in the locker room and so what do you do after you lose how are you committed to each other during the process of going through trying to win and you're the underdog and so these are the parts that I love the most because this is what takes you through life. That's what that young man, Barry, is going to pass down to someone else. That's what he, the fireway, is going to pass down to someone else. And so these are learnable, teachable, teachable moments. And you just have to love the passion and the energy that this coach had for New Mexico State. And, and the final game for both Remy Barry yep. out of Paris, France, Chile, Macaway out of Johannesburg, South Africa. D.K. Eldridge, you saw him get the hug as well. I mean... This was it for them, but, you know, they gave the best effort, you know, regardless of the score, it was their shining moment on national TV. Isn't that all you can do in life, though? Go up against a tough situation and give your best effort, and that's why I love seeing these kids go relentlessly 40 minutes playing these games. Graham was using the clock, now gets it inside, and Nicholson is fouled. Bill Self also sending on Sigat Sloy Mikhailu. A freshman out of the Ukraine plays about 12, 13 minutes a game. Mikhailu, incidentally, played for the Ukrainian national team, which, as you guys know, is coached by the Tsar, Mike Fratello, <laughs> and Sabayat Slow said to me earlier that, you know, the Tsar is an excellent coach, but he does not like him personally. <laughs> I think I've heard that before. I come to tell you. <laughs> For all the people. <laughs> you see the seniors for New Mexico State. And now as Bill Self makes substitutions. This Kansas crowd celebrating the victory. We talk about the hugs on one end from New Mexico State. And. Here on Kansas, bringing in seniors, bringing in guys that work hard all year, the walk-ons, the guys that work hard in practice, and by the way, the guys that might have to give you some minutes if you do enter injuries or foul troubles later on. But you love seeing guys that work, never get the accolades, finally get that moment out on the court. Hunter Mickelson swings down, and now the coach's son, Tyler Self, sophomore from uh, Lawrence, who has appeared in just six games, able to check in. Well, with this one in the books, it establishes at least one half of what could potentially be a monumental matchup in state rivals, Kansas and Wichita State, rivals that don't play each other, <laughs> but nevertheless talk about each other. As, as I said, a rivalry that does not exist. <laughs> but if they do get to meet, that'll be a classic. Hoochers will have something to say about that, though. Evan Manning hits the floor for the first time for Kansas. Sounds like a familiar name. Well, his dad, Danny, one of the Jayhawks all-time greats, now head coach at Wake Forest, was an assistant here at Kansas. Did a great job this year with that young Wake Forest team, trying to change the culture there. Christian Garrett, senior out of Los Angeles, also checks in. We're down to 34 seconds remaining as Pascal Siakam now will take a seat. Freshman out of Cameroon, the conference freshman of the year. We'll be seeing more of, of Pascal. 
Love seeing all the guys on the bench stand. Shoot it, shoot it. They want their guys to score. Nice ball <laughs> movement and Josh Pollard. Look at the bench. Just come on. A nephew of a Kansas favorite and longtime NBA player and raconteur, Scott Pollard. I would expect these guys to be able to execute every day in practice they play against one of the best teams in the country. You got to learn something from that. Final seconds. As Kansas will come away with a convincing victory. Hit a good fellow. Three minutes ago, State Well, Tanvir Bular hit a couple earlier, but not that time.